Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. I'd like to say homemade, but these equations are pretty easy to come up with and I can kind of show you some of the tricks. Anyways, so we have this equation, f of x, y equals f of x to the power ln f of y. Now, some functional equations only have one variable. Those are sometimes very easy to solve or they're asking for a particular values like f of 1, f of 0, then those are usually easier to handle. Uh, the ones with more variables, like 2 or more, uh, a little, can be a little challenging, but there are certain uh, templates, or should I say, uh, certain types of functions that we know the solution for. Uh, there is a family uh, which is called Cauchy's functional equations. I know there's some people say there's only one, but the others can be derived from it. And there's the continuity, so on and so forth. Okay. Obviously, in this case, you want f of y to be greater than zero, right? X and y don't have to be positive. Do, does it have to be positive? Anyways, let's find out. So since we have the exponential nature and we have the ln, this kind of tells us either we're going to ln both sides or we're going to do e to the power of both sides. And guess what? You don't always know how to solve these equations. And in my videos, I kind of know where to start and how to solve it, right? Even though I may not always work with a script. Most of the time I don't, by the way. I want it to, I want it to sound more natural. Um, you may not have any ideas. You just try different things and people think, wow, you can solve this equation in 10 minutes. It's not always the case. Sometimes it takes hours, it takes days. And sometimes you can never find the solution, right? But don't lose hope. So we're going to try e to the power first because I'll tell you in a little bit. If you do e to the power left-hand side and then e to the power right-hand side. I didn't want to tell you because why would I show you this if, if it didn't work, right? <laughs> okay, great. But this is not going to help. You know why? Because nothing simplifies. e to the power something like, it makes it more exponential, makes sense? Kind of making it more complicated. If, if whatever you do is making things more complicated, you may want to step back and you know, change your mind. So, e to the power did not work, but I wanted to show you something that didn't work this time. And now we're going to go ahead and ln both sides, okay? Natural log and natural log. Now, when you natural log something like this, you don't have to use parentheses, but I sometimes do, you can go ahead and think about the power property. When you don't use the parentheses, actually, it's a little better because uh, that's going to look, um, I don't know, that method is going to be a little bit more straightforward, in my opinion. It could be wrong. So this is a power. So we have the property ln x to the n equals n ln x. Make sense? So we can go ahead and move this to the front. ln f of x, y equals ln f of y, which is going to uh, come down times ln f of x. This is super duper nice. You know why? Because now we can turn it into something we know. Remember, I was talking about Cauchy's functional equations. There's actually, I think, four different ones. Let me go ahead and list them so that you can hopefully refresh your memory on those. If you haven't seen them before, that's fine too. But those usually look like this. And since I have f of x in this equation, I'm not going to use it. Instead, I'm going to use g of x, okay? So for one of them is if you have g of x, y, that could turn into two different things, a sum or a product, right? So that's kind of like a, some type of transformation that turns a product into a product or preserves the product, right? You can talk about all abstract algebra stuff, vector spaces, so on and so forth. We're not going to get into those, but there's definitely a lot of stuff involved with these kinds of transformations. Or we could take a sum and then turn it into a product, or we could turn the sum into a sum, or just preserve the sum. Make sense? Can we turn a sum into a quotient or like different ways? Sure, but I don't think they're going to be special functions, and that might be another discussion. But those are for, you know, main families of equations that usually go under Cauchy's functional functional equations category. And let's think about what would typical solutions look like. And of course, we do need continuity. And sometimes you can find it without continuity. 
or differentiability comes into play, so on and so forth. But differentiability is definitely a stronger condition and this is, it's usually very helpful because you can differentiate both sides and play with values and that's more fun. Okay, so what about the first one? Can you think of a typical function that satisfies this? I can hear you say log, right? Yes, you can say something like any log base or k times ln x. The reason why we have the k there is because it's gonna cancel out, but we do need it because unless we are given initial conditions, we wouldn't know exactly what the function is going to be. But if you wanted to just pick an example that works, ln x would be fine for k equals one. What about zero? Absolutely, you, because k equals zero will give you zero. Zero function, function that is identically equal to zero at every value would work because zero plus zero is equal to zero. See? Okay, what about the second one? Let's, before the second one, I wanna go back to this one because they kinda seem to be the inverses, don't you think? Yes, because they're switch roles. So in this case, and by the way, these GXs are all separated, individual cases, would be something like e to the power x. But instead of that, you could say e to the power kx, because again, for the same reason, this would work in the general case. Make sense? And I want you to think about the other two cases, but don't worry, one of them I'm gonna be using because notice we have a product to product situation, which is the second one. I think this one, okay. Anyways, let's see where this takes us. So here, I'm gonna call this g of x. Look at this, this is beautiful. Once I call that g of x, automatically this becomes g of y and this becomes g of x, y. Of course, that's an implication, direct implication. So we have a nicer equation, g of x, y equals g of x times g of y. Beautiful, and that brings us to the second category. So what is the solution for this? Think about it. I want you to think about it for a second because I'm about to answer it. I think this will be a power function because if you think about this, x, y to the power n, is x to the n, y to the n. So if you define this to be g of x, our condition is satisfied. Therefore, and it's something that you memorize and keep using, but of course, if you need proof, that's a different story, right? Now, so g of x is gonna be something like x to the power n, but is, is there a k involved? Hmm, let's think about it. Can it be k x to the n? And the answer is no, unless k is zero, one, or negative one, or actually, I don't think negative one works because if you plug it in, you're gonna get k squared equals k. That only works for zero and one. Okay, so those are specific cases, so we're not gonna use a k, and we're just gonna take k equals one, actually. So x to the power n should work. Makes sense? But that's not the solution because we are looking for f of x. So what is g? g is ln f of x. So set it equal to ln f of x, and then this is base e, use the definition f of x equals e to the power x to the power n. Is n an integer? Not necessarily. It could be a real number. Can it be a complex number? That's a good question. But this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.